Chelsea Rainey. Hey, congratulations for ultrasound. Thank you, Gabe. So let's let's ask that uh, easy question. What initially attracted you to a project like ultrasound? Chelsea, go ahead and start. I think I've always wanted to be uh, a, like adapt a character from a graphic novel. I thought that was really cool, but the script too, it just hooked me. I, I really loved the layers and the complexity of it. I loved Connor's writing and um, it was very like visual read for me and emotional and that at first struck me. And then once I delved into Connor's generous bosom books, I was just sold. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Ray? Um, yeah, I, I thought that the, the script was super compelling and I liked that it wasn't so straightforward. And for me, it really took like several reads to finally kind of have a grasp about what the reality of the story is and the reality for my character in particular. Um, and I liked that it wasn't um, predictable at all. And then I just... Of course, was just I, I, after audition was so happy to find out that I got that I booked it and that I got to actually help bring it to life. So, yeah, I'm just happy to be involved. So when when either of you were read, reading, um, you know, through through the story through the script, um, how long did it take to figure out what's real and what's not real? I had to read it like I think three or four times and have multiple conversations because I got it a week before we started uh, or I got it during the audition, but like to really read it and knowing I was doing it, it was like a week before we the shoot date. And um, I had to read it like three or four times, call Rob every day, like, okay, is this real? What's happening here? How, how does this work? You know, like what's true to her, what's not? Because Glenn and I are in different realities at certain points. Um, and so it, I think it wasn't until the day before shooting that I had my aha moment of like, this is her truth. Um, so thank God I figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess for you, Rainey, it was it was easier to figure uh, your character out, right? Um, well, I think I definitely had to read it a couple of times. I, re I read it just once, um, kind of like a cursory read prior to my audition, just to really understand where I am in the scenes that I was putting myself on tape for. And then after I found out that I booked it, I was so excited and was like, oh my gosh, I really have to like dive in and really understand just what's, what's really happening in this story. Um, so reread it a couple times before shooting, but I think that it is such a complicated story and it is also such a visually driven story that it wasn't even really until actually finally watching the movie that I think I was able to put the pieces together in an even more meaningful way. And because I think it really is a story that's meant to be watched. Um, and it's, it's, a uh, it's, it's best vision is, um, uh, and being expressed, I think, like you have the visual element as well about it than just reading it. Most excellent. Chelsea, your character is, I want to say, extremely complicated to play um, through, throughout this entire film. How did you keep it all straight um, um, for, for yourself, playing, I, I want to say, like playing your character in different situations? Yes, um, I, you know, I think I just had to stay true to who she was and like what her truth was and not worry about all the bigger manipulation elements going on because she's unaware of those things. So I had to put the actor aside and just really be present with Cindy's experience. I also, I, I owe the script supervisor, Catherine Doughty, like mm, all of my love because whenever I was in a scene and I was unsure of where I was kind of in a structured and logical way, I could go to her and she just, she knew the story so well, like the back of her head. And so did Rob and so did Connor that like to have them as touchstones was really helpful for me to be able to be present with each situation. Um, because it was like a 19 day shoot. It wasn't like the luxury of having multiple months to shoot a film or something like this, you know? Um, so we had to kind of just crack down and figure it out. <laughs> Now, for both of you, um, the commonality is that uh, you both got to have a chance to wear that, uh, you know, that pregnancy out outfit. Uh, mm -hmm. um, talk about your experiences uh, wearing that. Uh, Rainy, go, you start first. Um, yeah, I mean, I was, 
I only shot on the movie on the very tail end for like the last two days of the whole production. Um, so I didn't have a lot, whole lot of time in the, with the belly on, but yeah, yeah it was a, it was a strange experience just putting that on and going to my trailer and seeing my belly definitely took a couple selfies in there. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, it wasn't too bad. Nice and warm. <laughs> yeah I there was two options for me I had a jelly belly and then there was like uh it, that didn't look like look like a proper pregnancy so then I had to they made this like rigged like foam belly for me um and yeah it was just hilarious like off screen just being like I'm not pregnant and here I am pregnant uh with like just taking pictures like Rainy said in the trailer and acting as though I was pregnant but uh, but yeah, it, it definitely brought the character to life and I don't want to give it away, but kind of like the complicated moment with the pregnancy, uh, was definitely a challenge, uh, to make that feel real, I think, um, and to empathize with that, but it was an interesting experience. Is, is there a different feeling between a jelly belly and a foam belly? <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, I, cause I didn't have the jelly belly on for too long. So, uh, it was really just the foam one that I got to live in first part of the movie. Yeah, it just feels like a big pillow kind of stuffed under your shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ch Chelsea, uh, could you talk about the, um, acting opposite of, uh, Vincent uh, throughout the, this entire film? Yeah, Vincent, um, Vincent was great to work with. I, I had a great experience with Vincent. Um, you know, he's, he's a child actor as well. And I think that we connected on like just an acting level of like having been um, doing this since we were young. Um, and yeah, I felt safe. I, uh, he was a great acting partner. I, I'm really tuned into myself when I work um, and my character. I have like my headphones in and I'm pretty quiet. Um, and he's more like um, friends with everyone and like he's present on the set the whole time. And so, um, yeah, it was a great experience. I was grateful to work with him. And, and Rainy, you, you worked a lot, um, with, you know, your scenes with, uh, with Chris or Bob. Could you talk about working with them? Um, yeah, it was great working with him. Um, and I loved working with Rob and just everybody on set who's uh, really wonderful. Um, it was it was kind of a strange time just because it was when we were actually shooting it we shot it kind of I guess like two years ago so it was right when uh, Corona was just hitting the states and we were like everyone kind of had this looming anxiety around them because we weren't sure what was happening and then thank goodness we ended up being able to squeeze the last days of shooting in because then like two days later every all the productions in LA were shut down so like it was kind of like this residual tension between everyone and not like knowing what to do <laughs> but and I'm kind of similar to Chelsea on set I like kind of just keep to myself get to go in my trailer in between uh setups to kind of just like stay in the right headspace um but yeah it was it was great working with everybody most excellent well wh one one more thing about talking about headspace because uh because a lot of themes in this film it's about uh you know like hypnotism um, do you two uh, believe in uh, hypnotism? Does that does hypnotism, you know, you think could, could actually happen like this? I've heard stories of people who believe, like Connor has a hypnotism story that I just listened to in their podcast the other day, of, like of a friend who, like, it really worked on them. And I know, like, the writer, I don't want to speak for him, but I know he's, like, had someone close to him be hypnotized. Um, and I, I'm open to it. I, I've, I've never done hypnotism. Um, after the film, I did like, like a therapeutic hypnotism to try it out. But like, I don't feel different or, you know, I, I don't know where I stand on that because I don't have enough experience with it, I think. Excellent. Rainy, last word. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's so much that we don't know about the human brain and about like, the consciousness and like the capacity to manipulate our thoughts and memories or whatever. Um, I also just like on a personal level, I'm deeply interested in past life regression. So it's, I've, I haven't done it yet, but there's, there's this author, Brian Weiss, who writes, writes a lot about past lives and part of his technique is putting people under hypnosis and 
uh, like tr triggering their past life and past life memories. So I think, I think that they're, who freaking knows what we can do, you know? <laughs> Conscious is a large matter. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, those are excellent answers. Chelsea, Rainey, hey, thank you very much uh, for speaking to us about ultrasound. I can't wait to uh, do this again with you, too. Thanks, Jay. Thank Have you. Have a good day. I know.